You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony, and we're broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios. If you're just joining us, um, we've been talking about this brand new law that went into effect this uh, this last year in July in Florida, and we want to know if you think it's a great idea. Apparently, uh, all that a uh, homeowner association needs to do now is if they're not receiving their uh, monthly assessments from a homeowner who's renting their home out to someone else, they can just make a written demand to the homeowner and then to the the renter renter, and start collecting the money without going to court at all. Yeah. I can see the story you read, the background for this legislation, I can see where the renters were very confused by this issue. Because to a renter, a condo is not a condo. It's an apartment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They yeah. rented an apartment, and then some third entity shows up and says, "Hey, no, you got to start paying your money to us." That renter is going to be very nervous and very skeptical. Can, can you um, can you imagine the uh, the folks that were waiting uh, on boards, waiting for this legislation, knowing that this <laughs> that this was coming down the pike? And it was, just a couple more days. Couple it's because more days, we know there's on. a huge problem. For boards collecting delinquent assessments in this economy when so many homes are going into foreclosure, it's really hit homeowner associations hard, hasn't it? Yes, being able to collect money from rental units can make all the difference in allowing the association to stay viable. But is new legislation the way to deal with this, Gene? Do you think Minnesota should be doing something like this? Oh, man, I I, no. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> the short answer is well, no. Uh, let me think about no. Uh, yeah. So yeah, not not at all. I mean, I, I don't. I know you don't. Well, think you and I both like, kind of get our hair stands up when, when someone wants to pass a new law to deal with whatever is the hot topic of the moment. It, it seems to be. It, it seems to be. Uh, well, I guess if you take a look at it, that is what a legislator does. They legislate. Why are they voted into office? To legislate. Sure, so they sure. feel that the only way to fix all the ills of everybody complaining to them is to legislate. Well, like my handyman husband says, if all you own is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. <laughs> right? I, I like that. That illustrates that point. Yes. Say that again. If, if all you own is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. That's that's for So if sure. all you can do is pass <laughs> laws, then every problem can be solved with a new law. Oh, yes. And uh, there people don't think about what the unintended consequences yeah. are in these cases. What's already in place for boards oh. of directors in, in Minnesota? Yeah. Well, to... of course, uh, one of their rights is to foreclose. We know that. So if a homeowner doesn't pay their dues, the association has a lien on that property. They can foreclose on that property. And we've seen boards foreclose, take over a property, and then rent it out themselves. Yes, we, we've even helped the association effectively be able to take the foreclose, get the property back. Renters are in there. Now that they own the unit, all of, the, all of that income is coming to the, the association. association. Or if it's vacant, I've had boards hire me to put a renter in there. Yes. And, and then, of course, uh, for those that are uh, just uh, catching uh, this uh, topic, too, uh, what it doesn't mean that the association needs to be responsible for the mortgage. And no. I think that's where people get, hung get, up. get caught. Yeah. And the association is never responsible for that original owner's mortgage. That the, only the owner is. That's right. The association can take over, can take control of that property yep. and rent it out until and unless... The mortgage company forecloses. And, and that's the thing. It'll, yes. there, there will come a time when the that mortgage company will finally say, wait a minute, we're not going to just... We're not this... getting our payment. Yeah. So we're going to take the property that's back. That's right. At the point that they do, now they're responsible. But during that uh, t- period of time, the association is able to diminish uh, the um, obligation that that homeowner right, had. the debt. That's right. And in Minnesota, there's a six-month redemption yeah. period for foreclosure. So for at least six months, the board of directors can collect the rent until the mortgage company takes possession. Yeah. Uh, here, so it, foreclosure, to me, is a very viable option. But, and, but one of the things that people would probably be uh, upset with with that as an option uh-huh. is that uh, it costs a lot of money to foreclose. And I it see. does. I you, see. You, you're, you're talking 
thousands of dollars when you're talking about the uh, the time of an attorney going through the the process yes. of perfecting a lien yes. and uh, beginning the foreclosure process and being able to do things according uh, according to the law. Yes. And it takes a period of time. Yes. Uh, so that is a concern if an association doesn't have any any money. They don't want to just add on to that debt obligation yeah. of that owner by spending thousands in foreclosure. But but they have something else that they can do. Yep, and, that's and right. That, and that is just getting a judgment. That's right. And then garnishing the rent. The rent. The association can hire an attorney or a representative to for small claims court. And get a judgment for that delinquent amount owed to the board. Once you have a court judgment, then you can start pursuing things like garnishment. And often, garnishment is tough yeah. because you have to try and identify where this delinquent owner might have bank accounts or whether they're employed and whether you can garnish wages. In this case, it's very simple. There is rent available, yeah. and you can garnish that rent. And yeah. at that time, then you can notify the renter, start sending the rent to us. And what, what, I, what I like about the process is that, uh, as you know, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are looking at, uh, if you are looking at uh, a, ju- a judgment here, uh, in small claims court, you can get a judgment up to $7,500. Okay. And, and, for, right. and for most people, if they're looking at foreclosing on a board, uh, usually the those people have less than seventy five hundred dollars into experience. it at yeah. that point, so they could move ahead. Yeah, and that process may take uh, four to six weeks to get a a court hearing. Yeah, and then once you have that, what I like about it is that you have what's called uh, the judgment. It's called the writ of restitution. Yeah, the writ meaning that this is what the the judge has said and ordered in that case. Now you take that to the sheriff's uh, department, and the sheriff then uh, can uh, go ahead and do other things. You can use that for garnishing money from a person's bank account, if yes. you know it. Yes. And then the sheriff takes care of that. Yes. You could do the same thing, I would think, for rent Garnish as well. Garnish their wages. But I think now... I- Attorneys, please call me and, and clarify this, but could the board not take that writ, copy it to the renter, and say, send us your money, send us your rent money from now on? Do you have to get the sheriff involved in that in that case? Um, I, I suppose not, uh, but I, don't I, know. I, I think I don't uh, know. Uh, the reason I like that process is that it uh, it makes it very clear that this is sanctioned. Sure. A, a, and then I think that was the problem with this uh uh, issue in Florida, you had these four college students right. who said, "I got a letter, right. but I I don't know which is what is." It right. was brand new legislation on top of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, how how could they? Uh, so know? maybe we don't need new legislation here in Minnesota. Maybe we just need to use the tools we have. We have more than a hammer. We we indeed we do. We have more yes. than a hammer. Yes. And uh, but it just uh, just to me it just seems uh, fraught with all kinds of. Uh, difficulties. It seems a little bit uh, kind of like well, the Wild I, West. If I you never ask me. like interjecting a th- outside party in the landlord-tenant relationship. The landlord-tenant relationship is highly regulated, highly legislated, and is truly what it's all about. Someone owns the property, someone rents the property. You start putting in third parties in there that can step in and collect rent for this reason or that reason, or can evict for this reason or that reason. We're heading down a really, really slippery slope i yeah. think uh very but uh but an appealing option though uh, <laughs> I, yes you, and you, i can understand the appeal you, you could see why yeah what do you think uh is this an appealing option uh do you agree with us that uh what we have in place is just fine or do you uh or would you like to see this in minnesota 651-289-4488 is the number and uh we're going to take uh, a quick break and when we come back we'll talk about this or what I'd like to get into next, Tony, is to talk about uh, the idea of our government uh, beginning to encourage flipping of homes as a way to a key and stable and growing housing market. <laughs> I I think you can tell the uh, in my voice that I probably don't agree with this, <laughs> but we'll get back to that after these messages. All right. 